Hi, I'm Tim Warner with CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Windows 8 Enhancements to Windows Explorer. It makes sense to me that Microsoft would revamp or retool Windows Explorer. This is, after all, the default file management utility in Windows 8 operating system. Do you date back as far as, say, Windows 3.1 with its old file manager? Pretty clunky stuff. Even farther back, if you remember Windows 1, that's a story unto itself. Windows Explorer has come along way, that's for sure. Specifically in Windows 8, we finally get the ribbon interface, the so-called Fluent UI, that was started in the Microsoft Office 2007 suite and is carried forward to Office 2010. The idea with the ribbon interface is instead of just your traditional menus, drop-down menus, and toolbar buttons, many of which may be confusing to users, we have our most frequently used commands grouped together logically in these ribbon tabs tabs as they're called. You'll see how that works in the upcoming demo. Another main feature in Windows 8 Windows Explorer is that we have much more control over file moves and file copies. You can actually drill in if you're copying, let's say, multiple files. Let's say you grab a bunch of files, you want to copy them to your flash drive, you get that going, and then you realize, oh no, wait, there's some other files that I also need to move to my flash drive. You don't have to wait for this first operation to finish you can just go ahead and do your second copy or move operation and it turns into a running actions interface where you can actually see detail, much more detail than was previously given on progress. File collisions are handled in a much more intuitive way. That is, if we tried to copy a file from our disk to a flash drive and we had a file with the same name on the flash drive, instead of a fairly unintuitive message box, now we have very detailed metadata. You're trying to move or copy copy file A that has these parameters, it was created on this day and time, it's this size, etc. Do you want to replace it with this file that was created on this date and time, you see? So we have much more information and the idea there is that we are less likely to unintentionally overwrite a file and be crying afterwards. Third, we have disk image mounting. Now more than ever before, we receive software through a download as opposed to receiving a physical disk. Therefore, we have a software file that has the extension maybe ISO or IMG, or it could be a virtual hard disk file, VHD. We're able to mount this now in Windows 8 natively without installing separate software like Daemon Tools or some other software mounter. We can just right click. We have Windows Shell integration and one of the options is mount. You know, a picture is worth a thousand words, a demonstration worth even more so. So why don't we pop into Windows 8 now and I'll show you how these new features actually work. In this demonstration, we're going to look at Windows 8 enhancements to Windows Explorer. The default start mode in Windows 8 is the Metro Start screen. So what we'll do is click the desktop tile to switch our interface to the traditional desktop. And to open Windows Explorer, we can use the Windows Explorer icon on the taskbar. Now at first blush, you may think to yourself, well, this doesn't look too different from how it did in, say, Windows 7. We have our favorites list, which gives shortcuts to frequently accessed locations. We have our libraries structure. We can access the local computer's resources as well as network resources. We have the built-in search functionality. We have this breadcrumb navigation system that we can override to type a custom path if we want to. We have an up one level functionality. All that's carried over from Windows 7. However, things get different when you click one of these words. I was going to say menus, but they're not menus, but they're actually ribbon tabs. If you've used Office 2007 or Office 2010, you know about the ribbon interface. We have tabs that aggregate commands based on their use. So in Windows Explorer, we have on the Home tab various options related to file management. Things like copy, paste, copy and move, delete and rename, folders, properties, etc. Now you need to have a file active to actually be able to use these options. Why don't I navigate to my documents library? I don't think there's anything in there right now, but I can certainly fix that. I'll right click select new text document and I'll just call this document and by the way if you want your ribbon to remain visible or expanded you can double left click to force the ribbon to stay open otherwise it's going to close whenever you click off of it as you see and that's fine in my case here but you'll now notice that because
because I have a file selected, commands are open on the ribbon interface. We also have a share interface where we can one-click email, one-click zip, burn to disk, print, fax, share to specific people. That's a very different interface from how sharing has been done historically in Windows. View now instead of just a drop down that allows us to change from preview mode to details mode, etc., is now done through the View ribbon group. We can turn a navigation pane on or off. There's a details pane. There's even a preview pane, which makes you think, it makes me think of Outlook. So, for instance, I can open this document, I'll add some sample text, save my changes, and now we see a preview of the file contents. That's something that's been around in Mac OS X for a while. And it's nice to have that file preview ability built into Windows Explorer that's historically been an add-on functionality. The Manage tab enables us greater control over libraries. The library, library function is really cool if you've never used it before, but it's not all that intuitive. At least historically, it hasn't been particularly intuitive. It's nice that Microsoft gives us dedicated tools now to make the library functionality easier to understand. The last feature I'd like to show you in this little demo is the control that Microsoft gives us over copy and move operations. I'm going to navigate using my navigation pane over here to my optical drive where I have some files that are fairly sizable. Let me open up view and cut off my navigation pane and also we'll cut off the preview pane just to give ourselves some more room to move. We can sort when we're in details view by clicking the column headings just like we can in previous versions of Windows. And what I'm going to do is shift click these WIM files because they're fairly large, right drag to the desktop and select copy from the shortcut menu. And this is going to demonstrate two things. First of all, you see we're copying two items seemingly at once. It shows us the percentage as we're going along. And if you expand the details drop down, it enables us to see more or less of what's going on. Note that we can pause the transfer. This is such a great option that even Mac OS X doesn't have. We can resume if we want to continue the file copy. It tells us what speed we're operating at and if we decide to cancel the operation, we can do that. Now, if you hover over here, it tells us exactly where the file copy is going from and to. And if I click sources, it actually shows me the files that are being copied. This is some really great power that Microsoft gives us. Because let's face it, nowadays we've got files that weigh in pretty darn large. And it's nice to be able to have more control when we're copying and moving them. I hope that this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.